We feel very comfortable managing people who are diagnosed with Marfan syndrome. The big problem today is the great many people who go through life not being diagnosed. Many physicians have only the image of a very severely affected person that they may have seen in a textbook. In fact, the majority of people don't read textbooks and don't know what they should look like, and in fact, have much milder or more subtle forms of Marfan syndrome. But these folks need to be managed just as aggressively to prevent them from dying suddenly. Here is where organizations such as the Canadian Marfan Association play such a vital role in providing educational services for health professionals generally, who then can be much more attuned to the fact that they may have people with Marfan syndrome in their practices make the diagnosis and save their lives. My husband um, had his aneurysm, aortic aneurysm, while cycling, racing, actually, on his bicycle. One week prior to that, he was in a doctor's office and he was given a clean bill of health. He had gone in because he felt, actually, that there was something wrong, that he was, um, he was weak. A uh, doctor didn't recognize any of the symptoms. He had absolutely no idea that he had Marfan's up until that time. All the researchers and cardiologists will tell you that, that you know, there's, there's this gray area where people can kind of float under the radar. I was lucky to be diagnosed, that's all I know. If I hadn't been diagnosed at nine um, and then had proactive care, I could very much not be here and probably wouldn't. I was lucky that our, our family doctor was able to recognize it. Most general practitioners, or a lot of them, are not able to recognize because it's such a uh, multidisciplinary syndrome, it's hard to put it all together. So we consider ourselves very lucky. They determined that Julianne has a spontaneous mutation. There's some suspect of her brother, but it hasn't been proven because he doesn't exhibit as many symptoms as she does. And until there's a better testing for now, they consider her a, a mutation. Neither of my parents have Marfan syndrome, although um, there's some small signs of it in my father's side of the family. He kind of looks like me and you know, there's been some other genetic issues in some cousins, but nothing, nothing enough that there was ever any real positive proof. Um, I've had genetic testing done while I was living in the UK as an adult, and uh, obviously I tested with the right, right match for that, with the right f chromosome 15 and fibrillin deficiency and all that. So. Um, it's definitely a, a genetic mutation for me, and which I think makes it even harder for family to deal with. Here's a dramatic story of a recently married young couple. The bride becomes pregnant, and late in her pregnancy, the doctors realize that there's something terribly wrong. She has Marfan syndrome. They decided to do a cesarean birth. She gave birth to a Marfan child, and she died. Imagine the devastation. The fear for me is that people, someone like myself who is diagnosed will walk into an emergency room and not, that emergency room will not understand what Marfan is or the risks that are in place and something terrible will happen. I have known families that have lost over a period of about three to four generations. They've lost grandparents, fathers, aunts, nephews, to Marfan before they got a diagnosis, before they finally figured out that they had Marfan syndrome. 